6.30 a.m. Good morning. This is Cynthia A. Johnson with Stand Up Now. Thank you for tuning in to this show. I hope you find this half hour enjoyable and inspiring as we showcase regular people from the city of Detroit who are doing great things and really making a difference in our city, the city of Detroit. Good morning, family. Good morning. This is Stand Up Now with Cynthia A. Johnson, and you're listening to us on Gospel 1440 WMKM Reborn. And let me also inform you that we are going to extend our show. So we have a show on Tuesday from 1030 to 11. We will have another show on Thursday. And of course, we chill out with God through music on Saturday and Sunday mornings from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. for those of you who are late night people. Anyway, today we have a special guest, Garland Hardiman. He is a realtor from Keller Williams Realty. And he's also a resident in Russell Woods. Today he is going to be discussing with us about real estate and foreclosure and anything else. I see he's got some things laid out from the city of Detroit that he wants to discuss with us. So good morning. Good morning, Cynthia. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to start off for by by thanking you and, and acknowledging you know our association which you also are a member of in, in the Russell Woods uh, Association area of Detroit which is kind of bordered by Livernois, Davison, Dexter and Cortland and I became very active there I grew up in that neighborhood and I left and went to California for a number of years but I've been back here for about seven and been very involved with the community mm-hmm because I see that it needs some leadership and it needs people who care about other people to get involved. Did I misspeak? Do you live in Russell Woods? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. So when I heard that there was going to be 62,000 foreclosures in the city and 30,000 of them were occupied dwellings, I felt this was so onerous and going to be so devastating to the city that I decided to get more involved. We met with uh, our council member from that district, district number seven, Councilman Leland, and we began a discussion about what is being done by the city and by our council member to ward off these foreclosures. And it was so alarming to me that in this discussion, I'm on the executive board for our association, I asked the councilman point blank the question, what are you doing about this crisis? And he responded to me and other board members to say, I was not elected just to hear what you have to say. I was elected to tell you what to do. What? No. Yes, he did. No, he did not say that. And I was so shocked and alarmed. I got up. I put my coat on. Please tell me that you are making a mistake on that. I am not making a mistake. I put my coat on and I said, I'm leaving. This is outrageous. I've never heard an elected official talk to his constituents that way. And then he came and he tried to get me to stay in the meeting and he said that we could work together. And since that time, he has attempted to work with us. But you know what? God is a good God. God is so good because he will give you the eyes to see. I bet you he didn't mean to say that, but it came out just that way. He was not elected to listen to you, but instead to tell you what to do. Well, that may have been the case. And then again, it may not that instead of trying to act out some revenge tactic against him, I went home and wrote the resolution myself. Hey. And then presented it to him and asked him to present our resolution from Russell Woods to the city council. And we started a movement with other groups that were already working on this issue, such as Moratorium Now, the Defense Eviction uh, Coalition, uh, the People's Platform, and all of them used the uh, resolution that I had written as a template for them now, and we went to City Hall uh, on March the 24th, presented it to the City Council. We got five out of the nine members after Councilman Leland introduced what we were attempting to do uh, to offer comments in support of a moratorium and taking action in terms of policy measures to ward off further foreclosures, particularly those of occupied dwellings. And then uh, we've gone to the county, uh, we, we spoke with uh, Irma 
uh, Clark Coleman, yes. um, uh, who was our representative. Uh, and I've attempted to, to contact uh, Senator Smith, but unfortunately, he has not made himself available in a month and a half of numerous contacts to his office to discuss this uh, this action with us, Yes, which I think is, is highly uh, illogical because the people in his district are so adversely impacted by these foreclosures, you would think that as an elected senator and a senior senator that he want, would want to be more involved. And uh, we did get support from outside of our immediate uh, districts of elected representatives from state, senate, uh, from state representative uh, Mary uh, Robinson. And she wrote a letter to the governor, to the county treasurer, all explicitly stating what it is that we wanted them to do. And there's some interesting policy measures that that we introduced to the council member that he introduced to the mayor in a, in a letter, such as each February we receive a notice from the city assessor's office stating that if you don't agree with your SEV values, which is your standard equalized values, that you can challenge that with the city of Detroit. But unfortunately, they only give you a two-week window to yeah, do that right. in the largest city in the state of Michigan, yeah. which is absurd. It is. And you have to go downtown and pay $20 to park in order to make that uh, challenge to your tax assessment. Uh, so some of the policy measures that we came up with that we asked the, the council member to present to the mayor and to his colleagues were that they should maximize the time for residents to do it and maybe give them a month or two months notice in advance that they should more widely advertise the, the number of... Um, programs that are currently available through the county uh, so that people can get some relief from their taxes, that they should hire more specialists, you know, to do the assessments they're supposed to do. There is a state law under the general property tax law that says that each city and township municipality should do assessments of the true market value of properties within their uh, jurisdiction every five years. Cynthia, do you know when the last time the city of Detroit did an assessment? Please don't tell me 20 years. Over 20 years. Oh, my God. And so that tells you that people are not properly assessed in terms of their values. I'm going to give you an example. I'm currently trying to uh, have a client in which they made an offer on a home in Russell Woods. And I won't give the address, but I'll describe the property to right. you. Right. Okay. It is over 3,000 square feet. It has four full baths, two half baths, and it has five bedrooms, three floors. It was taken from a family in 2014 in a tax foreclosure. It was sold as a tax foreclosure for $14,000. This same property has now been on the market for $56,000. And when you look at the SEV value on this property, it says that the standard equalized value is as of 2014, $41,823. That means that the market value is twice that, meaning that the market value was over $80,000 for this property. That this property is still shown as 100% homestead and the county foreclosed on it. That means that it's owner-occupied. So who's getting away with not paying taxes? And this is evident in so many properties that I have previewed uh, through my database as a realtor, where properties that are owned by mortgage foreclosures, financial institutions, owned by Wayne County through tax foreclosures, still are carrying a homestead exemption. Explain that, please. That means if once you file your transfer of ownership to a property and you actually live there, you get to say that I want a tax exemption as a homesteader, as an owner of this home and I live there. Therefore, it's about 16 to 18 percent deduction from your regular taxes if you are homestead. Now, when a property transfers hands like this one has to the county or a mortgage company takes it back in a foreclosure, it should immediately go to a zero tax exemption. Yes. That means that the county and the city will get more monies in taxes. Well, guess what? This property is still showing homestead. That is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, yes, it is. And for uh, residents, if this property sold for $14,000, why is it still show a SEV value of 
That shows you how much more they're overtaxed than they should be. Mm. That is four times as much as what that property is actually worth. That's the market value is the 14000 that it sold for. Now, if it goes back for 50000 or 55000 then the SEV value would be half of that, 25000 So, so the SEV really, in this case, the house sold for about 14000 SEV should be 7000 Should be 7000 And And then I did uh, a, data, a data analysis of all properties in Russell Woods that have sold in the past two years. And the average price of property sold, and some of them are not recorded, um, that are hand-to-hand -hand sales or, you know, quick claim deed sales, they don't have the amount other than $1.00. But of the average number of sales that are listed with the multiple listing service for realtors, I looked at that database, and it said that the average market value of homes sold in Russell Woods was $14,000. So that means people who have SEV values of $22,000, $30,000, $40,000 are all way overtaxed in which their actual value should be for SEV. Lord Jesus. And so we're hurting as a people <clears throat> that they supposedly, the Wayne County Treasurer's Office has issued a letter or a memorandum saying that until May 12th, you can still enter into a payment agreement if your taxes are delinquent. I thought that it was changed to June 1st. Okay, that's great that you asked that question because looking at this timeline for tax foreclosures for 2015 that is issued by the county, it says that as of March the 28th, circuit court enters a judgment for foreclosures. The property owners may redeem their property by paying all their taxes, interest, and fees by March 31st Lord Jesus. or lose their property. By April the 1st, your property is foreclosed. So the city and county, real state and state, are really ripping the people off in the city of Detroit. And they have been for a number of years. I mean, these are onerous taxes in which people are overcharged because the city has not done their legal responsibility, which is these assessments every five years. And then they've allowed properties to stay on the books, including the ones that they own through a tax foreclosure, as having a homestead exemption. Why do you think that this is going on? In part because there's been a lack of leadership among our elected officials and administrators in the city and the county to do something about their records and refollowing the law. That's number one. Number two... Lawmakers who make the law who don't follow the law. Correct. Interesting. Yes, mm -hmm. don't follow the law. And then that places an extraordinary burden on you and I as residents. I've been down to... The, the, to file an objection to my SEV values before, and they told me, well, you bought your house for this amount of money, therefore, we're going to keep it at this tax rate. No, it doesn't matter what I bought it for. What could I sell it for today? It's based on the market values. Therefore, my taxes should have been reduced, and they refused to do so. So it, it creates a, a greater burden on people, but when you look at the fact that these SEV values are far greater than what the, the, the taxable value should be on these properties, and people are on fixed incomes, they're unemployed, they're seniors that should have a poverty exemption and not have to pay any property taxes. Absolutely. The city's not getting that information <clears throat> out, out to people, and consequently, they're losing their homes. And we have story after story in which this is happening, and they say that they reduced it down to 16,000 occupied dwellings now. Well, guess what? 16,000 people with the number of people that actually live in those homes, say an average of three people per household, we're still talking about over 60,000 people that would be filed out of the city in the exodus and basically a genocide to say, we don't care about you, you leave. I related this to the movement in the 1830s when President Jackson had the Trail of Tears when they pushed out all of the Cherokee Nation from five southeastern states in, in, in the United States over to Oklahoma, and 4,000 people died because of that human tragedy. When they dropped the bomb in Oklahoma on black people because there was a race war between blacks and whites and them not wanting them to exist uh, in Oklahoma and thriving in their own businesses and doing things that were good for their community, that for me, that historical significance is just outrageous that the city of Detroit, even under its new mayor and leadership, Lord would Jesus. allow this to happen to 
such a plethora of people, good people, who have kept this city running and have sacrificed the lack of services in terms of police response time, uh, EMS time, when they have an emergency and they call for a medical emergency, uh, the streets are not properly paved on a regular basis. We get no snow removal whatsoever, and you know the last couple of years, the, the amount of snow that we've had. These people. Well, have... yeah, we did get snow removal <laughs> um, straight down the street. It blocked us in. Right. Okay, so that was the snow removal that we received. One received. time. Yeah. Well, All the whole yeah. winter. Yeah, yeah. And so with the lack of services that we've had, and residents have stayed with the city of Detroit, now they're taking their homes. And the amount of money that they... This is purposely done. There's a plan, and, and I think that the plan is for the new Detroit. Absolutely. Bingo. And so current residents, you know, I've heard the term used by an elected official in their state of the city address that we want to have inclusion. Inclusion for whom? Right. We've already been here. Yes. We're long-time residents yes. of the city. Are you saying that now somehow we should be included huh. and we maintain this city? It is such, it's a shame. Do you know about the CDBG funds and what do you think about those? Because as you speak, it's reminding me of the community development block grants, how for people who were, who are um, low to moderate income, low the lowest being a family of four under making under $36,000 a year, although that threshold has recently been raised. And those CDBG funds for these individuals, in part, were to help people with low to moderate income to get home repairs. And that was under a grant. It has recently been changed where now it's a loan, a 0% loan. And like I said, the, the threshold has changed to over $50,000. So it goes back to your statement with who are you actually doing this for? It's not for the current residents. We have to wake up. I'm so glad you're on the show. Well, thank you again for having me, Cynthia. You're so correct in everything that you just said about the CDBG funds. They have another fund called the Step Forward um, Program in which $495 million came from the federal government to help distressed property owners and people who got caught up in the whole mortgage foreclosures from the predatory lending that happened that was targeting neighborhoods like Russell Woods based on zip codes and giving people free money basically with no stipulated um, applications for the loan, you could get it on uh, stated income only. Those people took that money, and then when the principal and interest kicked in three years later, they would pay interest only for two to three years, they lost their homes. And then the, the, the created great blight in the city, and then the mortgage people stopped uh, paying the taxes, and then it went to tax foreclosure. And at the same time, communities became blighted, and now the mayor and others have said, well, let's take some of this money and create a loan fund. Well, guess what, <laughs> Mayor uh, and City Council? Many people cannot afford to do the loan, and you know they won't qualify for the loan. They have been unemployed or they have part-time employment. Uh, they have not filed their taxes, income taxes recently, but their house is falling apart. They need the money for repair, but yet the new Detroiters moving in Blue Cross, Blue Shield, DMC, Wayne State University, all of these other entities, Quicken Loans, offered the new Detroiters $20,000 yes. grants yes, to did. move into the city of yes, Detroit they did. so that they could buy condos in Midtown and Downtown, you know, new homes, or even come into communities like Russell Woods and buy one of these tax foreclosure homes for fourteen dollars or $15,000 with their grant money. With their grant money. And as long as they stay in that property for, what is it, three to five years, they don't have to pay it back. Yes. And I don't even think it was that long, Cynthia, to be honest with you. It may have been one, three years. Lord. So they could actually turn into a flip. So, again, that threshold is very important. The very idea that they stretched the threshold to over $50,000 was not created for our current residents. It is strictly for the new residents who, for them, 0% interest, that's a great deal. But for, like you said, 
People who can't afford it, they won't be able to pay back any loans. They can't even afford to pay for prescriptions. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help you, help you. And I agree with you um, dearly that you could drive down streets and you have working class people that cannot scrape together after paying all their other bills to do $5,000 to repair their porch, but their porch is falling in because of the weather changes in Michigan that over a period of 20, 30 years, and you haven't been able to do even any patchwork, your front steps and porch are falling in, your roof roof has started to... This is crazy. I hope that the listeners are listening to this. And I also, I want them to know that this is going to be immediately on Facebook. I'm going to put it on YouTube for those who want to share, and I hope you share it with everybody who you know in the city of Detroit and in this great state of Michigan. Share today's show, Garland Hard- Hardiman, very articulate, handsome young man. T- oh, thank you. Realtor for Keller Williams. His direct dial number, if you want to buy property in the city of of Detroit do business with this man 248-539-7340 again 248-539-7340 there is no one else who you want to do business with except Mr. Garland Hardiman and by the way this is not a paid advertisement I'm just sharing this information with you when there are people who are doing great things in our city of Detroit and our people especially who are sharing information, not because they have to, but because they care, then I have an obligation to also share that information. Cynthia, you are so kind and so generous with your time and with your show. I just like to say that, you know, the number of people that are facing foreclosure is onerous. I don't like it. It does not make me feel good as a business person or as a resident of the city of Detroit. And a long time, I mean, my whole life, I've been a part of the city of Detroit. I love this city. But when you look at what's happening to people, you can't walk away from it if you have the ability to speak out. And the name of your show is Stand Up, right? Stand Up Now. Now. And so I believe in standing up for what I believe in and helping other people. And in that, you always are going to do good business because you're doing what's right for the people. And we want to have relief now. We want people to be reassessed today. We want them to stop the foreclosures. And we want people to understand that they need relief. Uh, It causes people so much human misery to not know where they're going to go. And if, in fact, they give them relief, then it should be a fresh start. That's what I'm calling it, the Fresh Start Initiative. You take some of that $495 million that you receive from the federal government uh, for homeowners, distressed homeowners, and you apply that to people for the last three years. That's my proposal that cannot pay their taxes. What happened to over, what was it, $26 billion, the Global Settlement Agreement? That program, as well as the others we talked about (laughs) in terms of Step Forward and CDBG funds, Monies that are allocated for specific purposes somehow get changed when they come to the local level and people decide it could be better spent in another way. Global Settlement Agreement, specifically for people who lost their homes or whose homes were underwater. It did not, however, and I had to find this out after one whole year after applying for those monies that FHA and VA loans, they would not qualify. The very people who would need those loans, would not loans, would need the monies. Most people who I know out of the $26 billion if they received $300. Some people did receive $1,500 in monies in that settlement uh, for the fact that their homes had been not properly um, taken through a process with the proper signatures in a mortgage foreclosure. That's minimal in terms of the amount of money that they had That's already expended. That's it's not nothing. not even a, a, a drop in the bucket. It's nothing. And then they got people into these loan modifications, which were still very taxing on them financially. And I think they subsidized some of the financial institutions for offering the loan modifications. Yes, Yes, they did. When they had already been paid, because most of those loans are insured through Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD. Lord Jesus. And the veterans. So once you receive those loans 
and they're backed, they're, they're, they're insured by these other governmental or quasi-governmental entities, even if you become delinquent and foreclosed on, they get their money, then they come back and yes. sell that home again to someone else in a foreclosure. I want the listeners, our family, to understand that many of us have been hoodwinked and duped. It is time for us to stand up. Any last words? Stand up now. Thank you so much, God Cynthia. bless you. We I want relief now. Stand up now. This is Cynthia A. Johnson with Stand Up Now, and you have been listening to us on Gospel 1440 WMKM Reborn, and we shall return on Thursday, same time, 1030 to 11. God bless you all. Love you. Wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No more back thinking. Time for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very what it used to be there's so much hatred war and poverty wake up everybody no more sleeping in bed no more back thinking time for thinking ahead the world has changed so very much from what it used to be there's so much hatred, war and poverty.